lads and ladies, welcome back! This is once again Doki Doki Literature Club. We are continuing it finally. And by we, I mean me. Alright, here we go, let's get into it. Phew. I guess that's everyone. I glance around the room. That was a little more stressful than I anticipated. Oh, just a little catch up. Just, if you don't remember, we just played, we just, we just read poetry to each other. So. I specifically wrote mine for Natsuki, kind of, but that's how it, that's what's happened. Like we just I just read poetry, that's all. It's as if everyone is judging me for my mediocre writing abilities. Even if they're just being nice, there's no way my poems can stand to, to theirs. This is a literature club after all. What is that? I sigh. I guess that's what I ended up getting myself into. Across the room, Sayori and Monica are happily chatting. My eyes land on Yuri and Natsuki. They gingerly exchange sheets of paper, sharing their rep respective poems. As they read in tandem, I watch each of their expressions change. Natsuki's eyebrows furrow in frustration. Meanwhile, Yuri smiles sadly. Interesting. What's with this language? Eh? Um, did you say something? Oh, it's nothing. Natsuki dismissively returns the poem to the desk with one hand. I guess you could say it's fancy. Ah. Thanks. Yours is cute. Cute? Did you completely miss the symbolism or something? It's clearly about the feeling of giving up. How can that be cute? I, I know that. I just meant the language, I guess. I was trying to say something nice. That's how like how well that's going. Gotta be careful around Natsuki. You mean you have to try hard to come up with something nice to say? Thanks, but it really didn't come out nice at all. Um, well, I do have a couple of suggestions. <laughs> if I was looking for suggestions, I would have asked someone who actually liked it. Oh boy. Which people did, by the way. Sayori liked it, and Killswitch did too. That's true, I did say that. So based on that, I'll gladly give you some suggestions of my own. First of all, excuse me. I appreciate the offer, but I've spent a long time establishing my writing style. I don't expect it to change anytime soon, unless of course I come across something particularly inspiring. Wow, alright, I wasn't expecting Yuri to just come out and say stuff like that. She seems like the kind who'd, you know, take it and then silently ignore it. Which I haven't yet. <laughs> and Killswitch liked my poem too, you know. I liked all of them, so y'all can just chill. He even told me he was impressed by it. Natsuki suddenly stands up. Uh-oh, music's gone. Oh? I didn't realize you were so invested in trying to impress our new member, Yuri. Uh, eh? That's not what I... Uh, you, you're just... Yuri stands up as well. Maybe you're just jealous that Killswitch appreciates my advice more than he appreciated yours. She didn't really give me any advice. Huh? How do you know he didn't appreciate my advice more? Y'all chill. There's enough kill switch for everybody. Are you full of yourself? I... No. If I was full of myself, I would do go... I would deliberately go out of my way to make everything I do overly cutesy. Ah! Um... Is everyone okay? Well, you know what? I wasn't the one who's... Boobs magically grew a size bigger as soon as Killswitch started showing up. Holy crap. N Natsuki! Um, Natsuki, that's a little- This doesn't involve you! Both of them say that at the same time. Uh, I don't like you fighting, guys. Suddenly, both girls turned towards me as if they just noticed I was standing there. Killswitch! She- She was just trying to make me look bad. That's not true! She started it! If she could get over herself and learn to appreciate that simple writing is more effective, then this wouldn't have happened in the first place. What's the point of making your poems all convoluted for no reason? The meaning should jump out as the reader, not force them to have not force them to have to figure it out. Help me explain that to her, kill switch. But wait. There's a reason we have so many deep and expressive words in our language. Good heavens. It's the only way to convey complex feelings and meaning the most effectively. Avoiding them is only unnecessarily limiting yourself. It's also a waste. You you understand that, right, Killswitch? Um... It's not how I'd feel in real life. Well? 
How did I get dragged into this in the first place? It's not like I know anything about writing. But whomever I agree with, they'll probably think more highly of me. Oh no. Hey, Sayori. <laughs> Natsuki? Natsuki glares at me, drying up any words I had in my mouth. So instead I turn to Yuri. Yuri? But Yuri's expression is so defenseless I can't bring myself to say anything to her. Sayori! Eh? Yeah! Everyone's fighting is making Sayori uncomfortable. How can the two of you keep fighting when you know you're making your friends feel like this? Kill switch. Well, that's her problem. This isn't about her. Oi, she was my friend first. I, I agree. It's unfair for others to interject their own feelings into our conflict. Yeah, unless Sayori wants to tell Yuri what a stuck-up jerk she's being. Wow. She would never. It's your immaturity that's made her upset in the first place. I did not help. Something tells me none of those options would have helped. Excuse me? Are you listening to yourself? This is exactly why... Exactly why nobody likes... Stop! Natsuki, Yuri! You guys are my friends. I just want everyone to get along and be happy. My friends are wonderful people, and I love them because of their differences. Natsuki's poems, they're amazing because they give you so many feelings with just a few words. And Yuri's poems are amazing because they paint beautiful pictures in your head. My goodness, this girl knows what to say. Everyone's so talented, so why are we fighting? Be because well... Also, Natsuki's cute and, that's no and there's nothing wrong with that. And Yuri's boobs are the same as they always were. I don't know why I giggle with that. It's not funny. Big and beautiful. I was not expecting to have this conversation. Sayori... Sayori stands triumphantly. Monica stands behind her with a bewildered expression. I'll make some tea. Yuri rushes off. Yeah, she did. She skated out of there. Natsuki sits down with a blank expression on her face, staring at nothing. So, this is why Sayori is vice president. Oh, that was me. So this is why Sayori is vice president. I whisper to Monica. She nods in her turn. To be honest, I might come off as a good leader and I can organize things, but I'm not very good with people. I couldn't even bring myself to interject. As president, that's kind of embarrassing for me. <laughs> nah. It's not like I can blame you. I wasn't able to say anything either. Yeah, look at me, I turned to Sayori. Well, I guess that just means Sayori is amazing in her own ways, isn't it, she? You could say that. She might be an airhead, but sometimes it's weirdly suspicious that she knows exactly what she's doing. I see. Take good care of her, okay? I would hate to see her get herself hurt. Okay. That makes two of us. You can count on me. Monica smiles sweetly at me, causing my stomach to knock. Such a genuine person really does make a good president, regardless of what she says. If only I could get the chance to talk to her a little more. Okay, everyone. It's about time for us to leave. How did you all feel about sharing poems? Not sure I loved it. It was a lot of fun. Well, I'd say it was worth it. It was alright. Well, mostly. Killswitch, how about you? Yeah, I'd say the same. It was a neat thing to talk about with everyone. Awesome. In that case, we'll do the same thing tomorrow. This is getting repetitive. And maybe you'd learn something from your friends, too. So your poems will turn out even better. I think to myself, I did learn a little bit about the kinds of poems everyone likes. With any luck, that means I can at least do a better job at pressing those I want to impress. I nod to myself with newfound determination. Kill switch! Ready to walk home? Sure, let's go. <laughs> Sayori beams at me. It truly has been a while since Sayori and I have spent this much time together. I can't really say I'm not enjoying it either. Sayori, about what happened earlier. Eh, what do you mean? You know, between Yuri and Natsuki? Does that kind of thing happen often? No, no, no! That's really the first time I've seen them fight like that. I promise they're both wonderful people. You don't... you don't hate them, do you? No, I don't hate them. I just wanted your opinion, that's all. I can see why they'd make good friends with you. Phew. You know, Killswitch, it's nice that I get to spend time with you in the club. But I think seeing you get along with everyone is what makes me the happiest. 
And I think everyone really likes you, too. Well, gosh. That's... <laughs> Every day is going to be so much fun. <sighs> it looks like Sayori still hasn't caught into the kind of situation I'm in. Sure, being friends with everyone is nice, but... Does it really need to stop there? We'll just have to see what the future holds, Sayori. I mean, it's not like I can date everyone. I pat Sayori on the shoulder. She said that more to my, I said that more to myself than to her, but it's easy to use Sayori as an internal monologue sometimes. Nice. Okay. Yeah, let's do this. Okay. Let's see, I wrote one for Natsuki last time. So how come Monica's not an option on here? We got Sayori, Natsuki, and Yuri, but no Monica. Alright, let's try Entropy. Oh, perfect, perfect, perfect. Rain Cloud, okay. I'm trying to go for Yuri this time. Massacre! <laughs> <laughs> let's do Massacre. Alright, perfect. Um, Starscape. Perfect! Ooh, after image. Did I use that one last time? I kind of like that one. Okay, she's normally frowning. They kind of look like stickers. I guess that's probably the point, but still. Ooh, uncontrollable. I'm doing good at this graveyard. Uh, aura. Ah, oh, I'm doing real good at this. Grief. Okay, that threw me off. Um. Disarray. One of these days I'm gonna make myself write an actual poem using these words. I'm gonna have to write down the exact words I'm using and write an actual poem with it. You know, just personal challenge. Anxiety. Tragedy. What the crap, Sayori? Uh, fickle. Frightening. Boop! <laughs> yeah! I had to pick it. I had to. That's gonna throw off the entire feel of the poem and it'll be great. Uh, contamination. Three more, three more. Let's do... Covet. Infinite. And... Shame. Oh, okay. Oh, we got four. Okay, one more. Wrath. There we go. Got this in the bag. Another day passes and it's time for the club meeting already. I've gotten a little more comfortable here over the past couple days. Entering the club room, the usual scene greets me. Hi Kill Switch! Yo, Sayori! Looks like you're in a good mood today. <laughs> I'm just still not used to you being in the club, that's all. I see. That's a pretty simple thing to get you in a good mood. But I guess it's always the simple things with you anyway. Speaking of oh, speaking of which. I'm kind of hungry, aren't you always? Will you come with me to buy a snack? No thanks. Eh? That, that's not like you at all! I have my reasons. Why don't we take a look at your purse, Sayori? Eh? Why that, all of a sudden? Oh, no reason, really. I just wanted to look at it. You know, like a normal guy would. <laughs> Sayori nervously retrieves her coin purse. She fumbles with the latch and gets it open. Then she turns it out and lets the contents spill onto the desk. Only two small coins fall out. <laughs> I knew it. I can see right through you, Sayori. That's not fair. How'd you even know? Oh, my voice is cracking. It's simple. If you had enough money in the first place, you would have bought a snack before coming to the club room. So either you're not hungry and wanted an excuse to take a walk, or you plan to conveniently forget that you spent all your money so that I would lend you some. But there's one more thing. You're always hungry. And so that only leaves one option. Ah! I give up! Don't make me feel guilty! If you feel guilty, that means you deserve to feel guilty. Why am I, like, lecturing her? <laughs> Yuri suddenly giggles. Eh? I didn't notice she was listening in. Yeah, that's rude. Her face is in her book, as always. Ah, ah, I wasn't listening or anything. It was just something in my book. Yuri. Tell Killswitch to let me borrow some money. That's 
Don't get me involved like that, Sayori. Besides, you should only buy what you can responsibly afford. She knows what's up. This girl is smart. And frankly, after putting a mischievous little pulling a mischievous little stunt like that, your suffering is fair enough retribution. Yeah. Ah, did I just? I didn't mean that. I got too absorbed in my book. Uh. <laughs> I really like it when you speak your mind, Yuri. It doesn't happen much, but it's a fun side of you. That's... There's no way you could think that. You are right, though. I did something bad, and now I have to accept the revolution. Retribution. That! Still, coming from you, Sayori, I guess that's... There's a little devil inside all of us, isn't there? <laughs> Don't let her fool you. Sayori knows exactly what she's doing. After all, she told you guys she was bringing me to the club before she even told me. Yeah. Manipulative. But, but, you wouldn't have come if it weren't for the cupcakes. Oh, uh, that's true. So I had to trick Natsuki into making them. Come on, give me more credit than that, Sayori. <laughs> Pwap! What? Out of nowhere, something smacks Sayori in the face as she stumbles on tumbles onto the desk. What the heck? Ow! What was... Eh? A, a cookie? Sure enough, it's a giant cookie wrapped in plastic. What the crap? Sayori glances around. Is, is this a miracle? It's because I paid my restitution! Retribution. Actually, that one almost worked. <laughs> I was just gonna give it to you. But then I heard you blab about the cupcakes. It was totally worth seeing your reaction, though. Ha <laughs> ha Natsuki, that's so nice of you. I'm so happy. Sayori hugs the cookie. Nice. Jeez, just eat it. Sayori rapidly tears open the wrapper and takes a big bite. So good. Mmm. Sayori suddenly claps her hand over her mouth. I bit my tongue. <laughs> You're going through a lot over just one cookie. Natsuki bites one of her own cookie. Takes a bite of her own cookie. Ah, yours looks really good too, Natsuki. Can I try it? Jeez, beggars can't be choosers. But yours is chocolate. Yeah, why do you think I gave you that one? Fine. Still, I'm really happy that you shared this one with me. <laughs> Sayori gets out of her seat and goes behind Natsuki and wraps her arms around her. Ah, oh, jeez. I get it, I get it. Cookie still in hand, Natsuki reaches up to nudge Sayori off of her. Um. Sayori suddenly leans down and takes a bite out of Natsuki's cookie. Hey! Did you seriously just do that? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> Mouthful, Sayori trots away to safety. Yuri and I laugh as well. Jeez, you're such a kid sometimes. Monica, can you tell Sayori? Eh? Natsuki glances around. Monica isn't in the club room. Ugh, where's Monica anyway? Good question. Have any of you heard anything about her being late today? Not me. Yeah, I haven't either. Hmm. That's a bit unusual. I hope she's okay. Of course she's okay. She probably just had something to do today. She's pretty popular after all. Eh? You don't think she... She has a... Pardon. Ah! <laughs> oh, <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. She's probably more desirable than all of us combined. Eh, <laughs> that's true. Excuse me? Suddenly the door swings open. Sorry, I'm super sorry. Ah, there you are. I didn't mean to be late. Wait, oh, I said, ah, there you are. Sometimes I forget to read the names. I hope you guys aren't worried or anything. Eh? Monica chose the club over her boyfriend after. Chose the club over her boyfriend after all. You're so strong-willed! Boyfriend? What on earth are you talking about? Monica quizzically glances at me. Uh, never mind that. What held you up, anyway? Ah, well, my last period today was study hall. To be honest, I kind of just lost track of time. <laughs> that makes no sense, though. You wouldn't have heard- you would have heard the bell ring, at least. I must not have heard it since I was practicing piano. Piano? I wasn't aware you played music as well, Monica. Uh, I don't really. I just kind of started recently. I've always wanted to learn piano. That's so cool! You should play something for us, Monica. That's... Monica looks at me. 
Maybe once I get a little better, I will. Yeah, this is a literature club, not a piano club. Thank you. Yay! That sounds cool. I also look forward to it. Is that so? In that case, I won't let you down, Killswitch. Well, thank you. Monica smiles sweetly. Ah, I didn't mean any pressure or anything like that. <laughs> Don't worry about it. I've been practicing a whole lot recently. And I'd really love the chance to share what I to share once I'm ready. I see. In that case, best of luck. Thanks. So I didn't miss anything, did I? Well, I mean <laughs> Sayori got smacked in the face by a cookie and then stole Natsuki's. Not not really. I chose to leave I choose to leave Sayori's mischief I choose to leave out Sayori's mischievous escapade. I'm sure Natsuki will end up complaining to her anyway. It looks like everyone has settled down. Sayori somehow already finished her entire cookie. Yuri is back to her book and Natsuki disappears into the closet. Oh yeah, I've gotta read that manga. I'm really curious to talk to Yuri a little bit more, but at the same time, I would feel bad for distracting her from reading. I catch a glimpse at the cover of her book. It looks like the same book that she lent to me. More than that, she seems to be on the first few pages. Ah, uh, crap. I think she noticed me looking at her. She sneaks another glance at me and our eyes meet for a split second. But that only makes her hide her face even deeper in her book. Sorry. I was just spacing out. Liar. I muttered this, sensing I made her uncomfortable. Oh, it's fine. Excuse me. Cool. If I was focused, then I probably wouldn't have noticed in that first place. But I'm just rereading this bit, so... That's the book you gave me, right? Mm-hmm. I just wanted to reread some of it. For any particular reason? <laughs> Not for any particular reason. Nice. Just curious, how come you have two copies of the same book? Ah, well, when I stopped at the bookstore yesterday... Ah, uh, that's not what I meant. I mean, I, I just happened to buy two of them. I see. There's something fairly obvious here that Yuri isn't telling me, but I decide to let it go. I'll definitely start reading it soon. I'm glad to hear. Once it starts to pick up, you might have a hard time putting it down. Still want to know what it is. It's a very engaging and relatable story. That doesn't tell me much. Is that so? What's it about, anyway? Well, hmm. Yuri closes the book and scans her eyes over the back. The book is titled Portrait of Markov. There's an ominous looking eye symbol on the front cover. Ooh, Illuminati confirmed? Alright. I just wanted to make sure I don't accidentally give anything away. Basically, it's about this girl in high school who moves in with her long lost younger sister. But as soon as she does so, her life gets really strange. So I've noticed this is it happened twice now. I wrote the poem for Natsuki at first, and then I spent some time with her. And then I wrote the poem for Yuri. And I'm spending time with her. Is that just how the game is programmed to go, or is that, or am I just really good at guessing things? I'm gonna go with the latter because that sounds cooler. But as soon as she does, her life gets. Oh yeah, okay. She gets targeted by these people who escape from a human experiment prison. And while her life is in danger, she needs to desperately choose who to trust. No matter what she does, she ends up destroying most of her relationship, and her life starts to fall apart. That's kind of. It's kind of dark, isn't it? Yuri made it sound like it was going to be a nice story, so that dark turn came out of nowhere. <laughs> Yuri gently giggles all of a sudden. Are you not a fan of that sort of thing, Killswitch? I mean, don't go pointing fingers here. No, it's not like that. I mean, I can definitely choose those sorts of stories, so I don't worry. I can choose and joy. I hope so. Yeah, I totally forgot Yuri's into all those sorts of things. Pfft, real one didn't. She's so shy and reclusive on the outside, but her mind seems to be completely different. It's just that those kinds of stories, they challenge you to look at life from a strange new perspective. When horrible things happen, not just because one wants to be evil, but because they have their own goals, or their own philosophy that they believe in. Then suddenly, when you thought you were related to the protagonist, they're made out to be the naive one for letting their one-sided morals interfere with the villain's plans. I'm... I'm rambling, aren't I? Not again. I'm sorry. Hey, don't apologize. I haven't lost interest or anything. Well, I guess it's alright then. But I feel like I should let you know I have this problem. 
When I let things like books and writing fill my thoughts, I kind of forget to pay attention to other people. So you're saying you wouldn't make a good girlfriend. So I'm sorry if I end up saying something strange. And please stop me if I start talking too much. That's... I really don't think you need to worry. That just means you're passionate about reading. True. The least I can do is listen. It's a literature club after all, right? Uh, that's... well, that's true. In fact, I might as well get started reading it, right? You, you don't have to... Ah, <laughs> what are you saying? Just a moment ago you said you were looking forward to it. Come on, make up your mind, Purple. Let me just get the book. Oh, wow, I came out a lot more exasperated than I was supposed to. I quickly retrieved the book that I put in my bag. Alright, it's fine if I sit here, isn't it? I slip into the seat next to your ease. Uh, yeah. Are you sure? You seem a little apprehensive. That's... I'm sorry. It's not that I don't want you to. It's just something I'm not very used to. That is, reading in company with someone. I see. Well, just tell me if I end up distracting you or anything. Uh, alright. I open the book and start the prologue. I soon understand what Yuri means about reading in company. It's as if you can feel her presence over my shoulder. If I can feel her presence over my shoulder as I read. It's not a particularly bad thing. Maybe a, a little distracting, but the feeling is somewhat comforting. Yuri's in the corner of my eye. I realize that she's not actually looking in her own book. I glance over. It looks like she's reading from my book instead. This feels familiar. Sorry, I was just... Yuri, you really apologize a lot, don't you? I do? I don't really mean to. Sorry. I mean... <laughs> Here, this should work, right? I slide my desk until it's right against Yuri's, and hold my book more between the two of them. Ah, I suppose so. Yuri timidly closes her own copy. Once we lean in a little bit, our shoulders are almost touching. Ooh. It feels like my left arm is in the way, so instead I use my right hand to hold the book open. Ah, I guess it makes it kind of difficult to turn the pages. Here. Oh, different shot. Yuri takes her left arm and holds the left side of the book between her thumb and forefinger. Ah. I do the same with my right arm on the right side of the book. That way I turn a page and Yuri slides it under her thumb after it flips to her side. But in holding it like this, we're huddled even closer than before. It's actually kind of distracting me. It's as if I could feel the warmth of Yuri's face if she's in the corner of my vision. Are you ready? Eh? To turn the page. Ah, sorry. I think I got a bit distracted for a second. I glance over at Yuri's face again and our eyes meet. I don't know how I'll be able to keep up with her. Ah, that's okay. You're not as used to reading, right? I don't mind being patient if it takes you a bit longer. Thanks. It's probably the least I can do, since you've been so patient with me. Yeah. Thanks. We continue reading. Yuri no longer asks me if I'm ready to turn the page. Instead, I just assume that she finishes the page before me, so I turn it by my own volition. We continue the first chapter in silence. Even so, turning each page almost feels like an intimate exchange. My thumb gently letting go of the page, letting it flutter over to her side as she catches it under her own thumb. Hey, Yuri. This might be a silly thought, but the main character kind of reminds me of you a little bit. You, you think so? How does she? Well, I guess she's more blunt in a lot of ways. But she also second guesses all the things that she says and does. Like, she's afraid she'll do something wrong. It's not like I can see into your head or anything, but they're kind of reminiscent of your own mannerisms. I, I see. Yuri remains silent for a moment. But Kill Switch, that's probably a terrible thing to have in common with her. Oh, that's so embarrassing that you think that. Ooh, wait. I didn't mean it in a bad way or anything. Sorry, I didn't really know you were self-conscious about that sort of thing. I don't know. I think I'm just digging myself a hole. I guess I more meant that it's kind of cute. Ah. Uh, what are you saying all of a sudden? I... Okay, everyone. Hmm. She has a habit of doing that. I think it's about time we shared today's poems with each other. <coughs> we might not have enough time if we wait too long. Ah. Uh, Yuri exhales, spared from finishing her thought. Is that alright, Yuri? You look kind of down. I'm sorry if I haven't been looking forward to this. If you haven't been looking forward to this. Ah, it's not that. It's fine. Yuri releases her hand from the book, causing it to close on top of my thumb. Alright. Guess I'll do some more reading tonight. 
Or would you prefer if I only read it with you? Um, I guess I don't have too much of a preference either way. Hmm. In that case, I'll read a little more tonight. And it'll be more fun to read with you after it picks up a bit, you know? That's good reasoning. In that case, feel free to finish the first two chapters in your own time. Oh, she's assigning me homework now. All right. I stand up. I make a mental note of where I left off in the book, then slip it back into my bag. That's a good way to do it. Memorize page numbers. Who should I show my poem to first? Well, I did write it for Monica. No, I didn't. I wrote it for Yuri. Hey, good to see you again. Let's see what you've written for today. Oh, Yuri stares at the poem with a surprised expression on her face. Do you like it? Kill switch. How did you pick up on this so quickly? Ooh, that sounds good. Just yesterday I was telling you the kinds of techniques worth practicing. Maybe that's why. You get you did a good job explaining. I really wanted to try giving it more imagery. Yuri visibly swallows. Even her hand appears sweaty. Nice. I'm not used to this. Used to what? I don't know. It's fine. Take your... Oh, wait. It's fine. Take your time. Yuri breathes and collects her thoughts. I know that Yuri likes to think before she speaks, so I offer that patience to her. How nice of me. Yeah, just being appreciated like this, I guess. It probably sounds really stupid. But seeing someone motivated by my writing, it just makes me really happy. Are you saying you've never shared your writing before? Yuri nods. Really? I don't believe it. I really only write for myself. And besides, people would just laugh at me. Hey, I didn't laugh at you. I'm a person of singular people. Do you really think that? Again, Yuri nods. Huh. Even your close friends? Yuri doesn't respond to that. Mm, encouraging. I wonder why. Anyway, do you want to share the poem you wrote today? I'm not bored by this. Well, maybe a little bit, but... I'm just tired. Yeah. I do. If it's with you. Getting kind of forward there. The raccoon. It happened in the dead of night while I was slicing bread for a guilty snack. My attention was caught by the scuttering of a raccoon outside my window. That was, I believe, the first time I noticed my strange tendencies as an unordinary human. I gave the raccoon a piece of bread, my subconscious well aware of the consequences, well aware that a raccoon that is fed will always come back for more. The enticing beauty of my cutting knife was the symptom, the bread, my hungry curiosity, the raccoon an urge, the most increments in its phase, the moon increments its phase and reflects that much more light off my cutting knife. The very same light that glistens in the eyes of my raccoon friend. I slice the bread, fresh and soft, the raccoon becomes excited. Or perhaps I'm merely projecting my emotions onto the newly satisfied animal. The raccoon has taken to following me. You could say we've gotten quite used to each other. The raccoon becomes hungry more and more frequently, so my bread is always handy. Every time I brandish my cutting knife, the raccoon shows its excitement. A rush of blood. Classic f Pavlovian condition. I slice the bread and I feed myself again. Oh, interesting. Um, I was a little more daring with this one than yesterday's. I can see that. It's a lot more metaphorical. I don't know if it's my fault, but I can't begin to imagine what this poem is about. <laughs> That's right. It's a bit closer to my preferred writing style, using the poem as a canvas to express vivid imagery and conveying emotions through them. Yeah, if I take it at face value, then I can't even figure out what it's supposed to mean. That's a nice way to put it. Well... I think it's something that different people can relate to in their own way. I wanted to express the way it feels for me to indulge in my more unusual hobbies. It's these sort of things I'm usually forced to keep to myself, so I sometimes enjoy writing about them. Why do you keep them to yourself? Be because they're embarrassing, and people would make fun of me. Don't you have anything like that, Killswitch? Well, yeah, I guess I do. I feel like everyone has a little something like that. Ooh. <laughs> the best we can do is respect each other and our individualities. Even if it's difficult sometimes and some things make us uncomfortable. After all, if I hadn't learned to embrace my own weirdness, I would probably hate myself. Wow. I, I might be ranting a little bit now, but I'm glad that you're a good listener. I'm here for you. Alright. 
Let's do let's do them in not reverse order, but my brain broke. Hold on, let me remember. I don't think I remember who I did last time. Let's How about Monica? I guess we're doing reverse order. Hi again, Kill Switch. How's the writing going? Alright, I guess. I'll take that. As long as it's not going bad. I'm happy that you're applying yourself. Maybe soon you'll come up with a masterpiece. <laughs> I wouldn't count on that. You never know. Want to share what you wrote for today? Sure, here you go. I give my poem to Monica. Alright! Great job, Killswitch! I was going ooh in my head while reading it. It's really metaphorical. I'm not sure why, but I didn't expect you to go for something so deep. Ah, uh, you know, I'm playing around. I guess I underestimated you. It's easiest for me to keep everyone's expectations low. That way it always counts that I put in some effort. <laughs> That's not very fair. Well, I guess it worked anyway. You know what, Yuri likes this kind of writing. Oh, you know that Yuri likes this kind of writing, right? Oh, I sure do. Writing full of imagery and symbolism. Unlike Sayori, who likes using simple and direct words to describe happiness and sadness, Yuri likes it when readers are left to derive their own meaning out of it. It's very challenging to write like that effectively, both allowing people to get something out of it just by feel, or letting them get deep, or letting them deeply analyze all the nuances. It could take years of practice, which I'm assuming Yuri has at this point. I never really asked, though. I'm sure I'm nowhere near her level yet. Don't worry so much about that. Oh, don't worry so much about that. You do your own thing. Just keep exploring and learn by trying new things. But anyway, you want to read my poem now? I like the way this one turned out, so I hope you do too. Alright, let's take a look. Save me. The colors, they won't stop. Bright, beautiful colors. Flashing, expanding, piercing. Red, green, blue. An endless cacophony of meaningless noise. Kind of like the way this is structured. The noise, it won't stop. Violently grating waveforms. Squeaking, screeching, piercing. Sine, cosine, tangent. Like playing a chalkboard on a turntable. Like playing a vinyl on a pizza crust. Okay. An endless poem of meaningless. Load me. Okay. Hmm. It's even more abstract than your last one, huh? <laughs> I guess it's just the way I write. I'm sorry if you don't like it. No, I never said that. It's just the kind of thing I've never really seen before, I guess. I kind of like playing with my space on the paper. Choosing where and how to space your words can totally engage the mood of your poem. It's almost like magic. The way I wrote the lines really short makes it feel like they're trying to speak over the noise. I see. It's still hard for me to tell what it's about, though. <laughs> Sometimes asking what a poem is about isn't the right question. A poem can be about as can be as abstract as a physical expression of a feeling. Okay. Or a conversation with the reader. So putting it that way, not every poem is about something. Not every story has meaning to it. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Here we go. Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult situation. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. Okay. You never know when you might change your mind. Okay. Or when something unexpected may happen. Wait, is this tip even about writing? Are you a gamer, Monica? What am I even talking about? <laughs> That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Okay! Alright, let's do Sayori. Natsuki can be last. Guess I'm going to reverse order. Ooh! I like this one, Kill Switch. It has some nice feeling in it. Ah, glad. Does that mean it's better than yesterday's? Mmm, let me think. Hmm... I don't know. Cool. I'm glad I, you thought. I guess I like them both. <laughs> That's not very helpful, you know. Well, I'm not very good at figuring out if poems are good or bad, but that's why I just go by my heart. If it makes me feel things, then it must be a good poem. That works. I'm not sure that's exactly how it works. Then again, I guess conveying feelings is a pretty important part of this whole thing. Yeah, maybe. Honestly, I don't even know what kind of writing you like in the first place. Yeah, me neither. Ugh. Why don't you at least try giving it some thought? Aw, you want to write something for me? Whoa. Well, I never said that. That's so sweet. Yeah, right. 
But you're always thinking about other people. You need to think about yourself once in a while. If you don't, you might end up getting hurt at some point. Eh? Well, I don't really know what you mean, but I'll try to keep it in mind. Well, whatever. Anyway, let's see. Hmm... I guess I like happy poems. Wait, sometimes I like sad poems, too. Sometimes a little bit of both. There's a word for that, right? What's the word I'm looking for? Bittersweet! Excuse me. Yeah! I like things that are happy and things that are sad. Happy and sad? I can't see you liking something sad, Sayori. Well, I like happy the most. But sometimes when you have a little rain cloud in your head, a sad poem can help give the rain, the rain cloud a little hug. Sure. I guess that's why people listen to sad music when they're depressed. And make a nice happy rainbow. Sayori, that's unexpectedly poetic. Huh. It's almost like we're doing poetry. Eh, it is? Maybe I'm getting better at expressing my feelings after all. Thanks, Kill Switch. I should go write that down then. You can read my poem now, okay? Bottles! I pop off my scalp like the lid of a cookie jar. Good heavens. It's the secret place where I keep all my dreams. Little balls of sunshine, all rubbing together like a bundle of kittens. I reach inside with my thumb and forefinger and pluck one out. It's warm and tingly, but there's no time to waste. I put it in a bottle to keep it safe. And now I put the bottle on the shelf with all the other bottles. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts in a bottle, all in a row. My collection makes me lots of friends. Each little bottle is starlight to make amends. Sometimes my friend feels a certain way. Down comes a bottle to save the day. Night after night, more dreams. Friend after friend, more bottles. Deeper and deeper my fingers go. Like exploring a dark cave, discovering the secrets hiding in the nooks and crannies. Digging and digging, scraping and scraping. I blow dust off my bottle caps. It doesn't feel like time elapsed. My empty shelf could use some more. My friend looked through my locked front door. My friends looked through my locked front door. Finally, all done, I open up and in come my friends. In they come in such a hurry. Do they want my bottles that much? I frantically pull them off the shelf one after the other, holding them out to each and every friend. Each and every bottle. But every time I let one go, it shatters against the tile between my feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts and shards all over the floor. They were supposed to be for my friends, my friends who aren't smiling. They're all shouting, pleading, something. But all I hear is echo, 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 echo inside my head. I like the wordplay here. Wow, that's um, an interesting structure to that. Holy crap. Sayori, did you really write this? Of course I did. Didn't I tell you yesterday I was going to write the best poem ever? Yeah, but I mean, I didn't expect something like this coming from you. Monica taught me a whole lot. And I've been really in, and I've been really in touch with my feelings recently. I see that. It's almost kind of creepy. Creepy? Well, not not exactly. Maybe because I'm so used to you being cheerful. Well, never mind. I'm thinking too hard about this. The point is, it came out good, so you should be proud of it. Aw, thanks. I feel like I feel like I was meant to express myself this way. I guess it helps me understand my own feelings a little better. Writing is like magic. You've gotten pretty pa you've gotten pretty passionate about this, huh? I hope you keep it up. Yeah! Writing's the best. I'm gonna keep writing until I die! Ah, uh, <laughs> uh, don't get ahead of yourself. Sayori's always had a habit of getting obsessed with something before dropping it no more than a week later. I know how that goes. I wonder if this is one of those times. But seeing the passion in her eyes makes it hard for me to be pessimistic. Alright, Natsuki, you're up. Hmm. I liked your last one better. I kind of figured you would. Eh, really? Well, yeah, I could tell you were a little more daring with this one. Hey! Yuri said she was being more daring. But you're really not good enough for that yet. It fell flat. Wow, okay. Well, that may be true, but I just wanted to try something different. Yeah, I don't have a style yet. Chill. I'm still figuring this all out. I mean, I always like poems that aren't trying too hard. I hate when people try to sound fancy or add more meaning just by using annoying, complicated language. Just make it simple, cute, and to the point. Yuri is head over heels for all this cryptic nonsense, but I see right through that BS. Ha! Making your reader look so hard for all this deep meaning is just an excuse to have no meaning at all. I guess that's one way to look at it. Well, everyone has their own opinion. My opinion is the best opinion. I'm sure you figured that out already. Sure, yeah. Just don't, don't, 
tickle the sleeping dragon. Uh, anyway, here's my poem. Maybe you'll learn something. They're all longer this time. Amy likes spiders. You know what I heard about Amy? Amy likes spiders. Icky, wriggly, hairy, ugly spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a cute singing voice. I heard her singing my favorite love song. Every time she sang the chorus, my heart would pound to the rhythm of the words. But she likes spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. One time I hurt my leg really bad. Amy helped me and took me to the nurse. I tried not to let her touch me. She likes spiders, so her hands are probably gross. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a lot of friends. I always see her talking to people. She probably talks about spiders. What if her friends start to like spiders too? That's why I'm not friends with her. It doesn't matter if she has other hobbies. It doesn't matter if she keeps it private. It doesn't matter if it doesn't hurt anyone. It's gross. She's gross. The world is better off without spider lovers. And I'm gonna tell everyone. Wow. Actually, I kind of like that. It's not bad, right? It's quite a bit longer than yesterday's. Yesterday's was way too short. I was just warming up. I hope you didn't think that was the best I could do. No, no of course not. Anyway, the message is pretty straightforward in this poem. I doubt I have to explain it. Sometimes you can explain complicated issues with much simpler analogies. And it helps people realize how stupid they're being. Like, anyone would agree to that subject of this poem is an ignorant jerk. Do you know people like that? Of course! It's about love- oh, it's about how everyone thinks my- That doesn't matter. It can be about anything. I want it to be easy to relate to. Everyone has some kind of weird hobby or a, a guilty pleasure. Something that you're afraid of people find out they make fun of you or think less of you. But that just makes people stupid. Who cares if what someone likes as long as they're not hurting anyone and it makes them happy? Good point. That's a very good point. I think people really need to learn to respect others for liking weird things. Huh. That's funny. Yuri wrote about something similar today. Huh? Did you say Yuri? Yeah. She said her poem was about an unusual hobby of hers. I didn't really get it, but she said something similar to you. That people shouldn't make each other feel insecure about those things. Really? Well, I mean, Yuri's pretty weird, so I wouldn't doubt that she has some weird hobbies. Not th that there's anything wrong with that. Uh, it's not like I would judge her or anything. Yeah, sure. Natsuki has trouble finding words. I, I guess I should try not to be so mean to her. If she feels insecure about her weird behaviors and stuff, I mean, I always hate people who make me feel insecure. And Yuri made me feel insecure yesterday. But, but the way you put it, it sounds like she's learned her lesson. Well, I would say so. Even if her writing style is really different, I'm sure she'll- I didn't read the rest of that before I- okay. Alright. It's what I do best, after all. I don't like writing unless there's a good message to take away from it. Like, conveying emotions is important, but I want to make people think, not just feel. Remember that. I'm not gonna write a good one for tomorrow. Oh, I am gonna write a good one for tomorrow, too, so look forward to it. We're doing this again tomorrow? Okay, everyone. We're all done reading each other's poems, right? I have something extra planned for today, so if everyone could come sit at the front of the room. Is this about the festival? Well, sort of. Ugh, do we really have to do something for the festival? It's not like we could put together anything good in just a few days. Hey, we could all write poems. We'll just end up embarrassing ourselves instead of getting any new members. That's a concern of mine as well. I don't really do well with last minute preparations. Don't worry so much. We're going to keep it simple, okay? We won't need so much more than a, we won't need much more than a few decorations. Sayori has been working on posters, and I've designed some pamphlets we can give out during the event. Okay, that's great and all, but that doesn't tell us what we're actually going to be doing for the event. Ah, sorry, I thought you heard about it already. We're going to be performing! A literature club, performing! Not logically. Performing? P um, Monica? Yeah, we're going to be having a poetry performance. Oh, that makes a lot more sense. Each of us are going to choose a poem to recite during the event. Like, one of our own, but or like a pre-existing one. But the cool part is, we're also going to let anyone else come up and recite poems too. Sayori's putting it all in the posters in case anyone wants to prepare ahead of time. <laughs> Sayori, who's been coloring a poster, holds it up for us to see. Are you kidding me, Monica? You didn't, you didn't already start putting those posters up, did you? Well, I did. Do you really think it's that bad of an idea? Well, no. Not a bad idea. But I didn't sign up for this, you know. There is no way I'm going to be performing in front of a group of people like that. I, I agree with Natsuki. I could never in my life do something like that. 
Imagining it, Yuri shakes her head in fear. Guys! No, Sayori. I understand where they're coming from. Remember that Natsuki and Yuri have never shared their poems with anyone until just a couple of days ago. It's a lot to ask for them to recite their poems out loud to a whole room full of people. I guess I kind of overlooked that, so I'm sorry. But, I still think we should give it our best. We're the only ones responsible for the fate of this club. If we start the event and put on a good performance, then it will inspire others to do the same. And the more people who perform, the better we'll be able to show everyone what literature is all about. Yeah! I swallowed something. It's like, it's about expressing your feelings, being intimate with yourself, finding new horizons, and having fun. That's right. And if those reasons... And it's those reasons that we're all in the club in the first place. I think that's what that said. Don't you want to share that with others? To inspire them to find the same feelings that brought you here in the first place? I know you do. I know we all do. What inspired me to come here in the first place was Sayori and Cupcakes, so don't go putting me in this. And if all it takes is standing in front of the room for two minutes and reciting a poem, then I know you can do it. Natsuki and Yuri remain silent. Sayori looks worried. I guess that leaves me no choice. I agree. I don't think it's too much to ask. I think that Sayori and Monica have been trying really hard to get new members. The least we could do is help them out a little bit. Well, maybe, but... It looks like Natsuki doesn't have any arguments left. Uh, okay, fine. I guess I'll just have to get over it. Alright! Phew. Thanks, Natsuki. What about you, Yuri? Yuri dejectedly glances around at everyone else's expecting faces. Sigh. I guess I don't really have a choice. <laughs> That's everyone! You're the best, Yuri! This club is seriously going to be the death of me. It sounds like something you're into. Oh gosh. You'll be fine, Yuri. But anyway, let's move on to the main event. I want each of you to choose a poem of yours. We're going to practice reciting them in front of each other. Oh, so like... Memorizing it. N no way! Monica, this is too sudden. Well, if you can't recite your poem in front of the club, how do you expect to do it in front of the strangers? Oh no. Don't worry, I'll start off to help everyone feel a little more comfortable. Can I go next? <laughs> of course! Now let's see. Monica flips through her notebook to the specific poem she has in mind for herself. She then stands behind the podium. The title of this poem is The Way They Fly. <laughs> Monica begins reciting her poem. Her clear, confident voice fills the room. More than that, her inflection is pristine. She knows exactly how to apply emotion behind each line she recites, bringing the words to life. Is this something she's done before, or is she simply a natural? You know, it could be both. I glance around me. Everyone has their eyes on Monica. Sayori looks amazed. Yuri has an intense expression on her face that I don't understand. Finally, Monica finishes the rec recitation. The four of us applaud. Monica takes a breath and smiles. That was so good, Monica! <laughs> Thank you very much. I was just hoping to set a good example. Are you ready to go next, Sayori? I... I'll go next. Oh, Yuri's fired up all of a sudden! Yuri clutches a sheet of paper between her hands and stands up. Keeping her head down, she walks quickly over to the podium. Where did we get a podium? This poem is called... Yuri anxiously glances up at each of us. You can do it, Yuri. It, it's called Afterimage of a Crimson Eye. I use the word afterimage. I remember that for some reason. Yuri's voice shakes as she starts reading the poem. Just a moment ago, she practically refused to do this. Why is she suddenly putting in so much effort? As Yuri gets past the first couple lines, her voice changes. It's almost like what happens when Yuri gets absorbed into her books. Her quivering words transform into, a sharp, into the sharp syllables of a fierce and confident woman. The poem is full of twists and turns in its structure that she enunciates with perfect timing. This must be a rare glimpse into the whirling fire Yuri keeps concealed inside her head. Suddenly she's finished. Everyone is stunned. Yuri snaps back into reality and glances around her, as if she is bewildered even herself. I... it's up to me to save this situation. I'm the first to start applauding. Everyone joins me afterwards and we give Yuri the recognition she deserves. It's not that we didn't want to applaud her, but we were so caught off guard that we must have forgotten. Hello. 
As we applaud, Yuri holds the phone to her chest and rushes back into her seat. Yuri, that was really good. Thank you for sharing. Looks like Yuri is down for the count. Okay, I guess I'm next then. Sayori hops out of her chair and cheerfully walks to the podium. This one's called My Meadow. Ah, <laughs> sorry, I giggled. <laughs> Sayori, it's a lot harder than I thought. How do you guys do it so easily? Ah, try not to think about it. Oh, no. Try not to think of it like you're assigning to other people. Imagine you're assigning it to yourself, like in front of a little mirror, or in your own head. Yeah, I look exactly like you. We could be mirror images. It's your poem, so it'll come out the best that way. I see, I see. Okay, then. Sayori begins her poem. Somehow, it feels like her soft voice was, has made, was made as a perfect match. The poem isn't aimlessly cheery like Sayori is. It's serene and bittersweet. If I were to read this on paper, I probably wouldn't think much of it, but hearing it come from Sayori's voice almost gives it a whole new meaning. Maybe this is what Sayori meant when she said she likes my poems. It's like I get to reach even more deeply into someone I thought I knew through and through. Sayori finishes and we applaud. I did it! Good job, Sayori! <laughs> even Killswitch liked it. What do you mean, even? I guess that's a good sign. What does that even mean? It came out nicely, Sayori. The atmosphere of the poem fits you really nicely. But it might be that the other poems wouldn't work quite as well with that kind of delivery. I don't really understand. Well, in other words, I've seen poems of yours where that sort of gentle delivery wouldn't work at all. They might need a little more force behind them, depending on what you're reading. Oh, I know what you mean. That's, well, I've been practicing that sort of thing. It's just embarrassing to do in front of everyone. <laughs> the next time I'm going to make you pick a poem that challenges you a little more. We don't have much time before the festival, you know? Okay. Now, who's next? Natsuki? <laughs> don't make me go before Kill Switch. It's not like I can compare to you guys anyway. Might as well let Kill Switch lower everyone's standards a little before I have to do it. Yikes, thanks. Natsuki. It's fine, it's fine. I might as well get this over with. But it's not like I have much of a selection of what to read. I'll just have to go with what I wrote for today. I stand up and step in front of the podium. Everyone has their eyes on me. Yeah, Yuri just kind of appeared out of nowhere, making me feel terribly awkward. I recite my poem. Since I'm not exactly confident in my own writing, it's hard to put energy into it. Despite that, once I'm finished, I receive applause anyway. Sorry, I'm not really as good as everyone else. Don't worry about it so much. I think it's less about your abilities and more about your lack of confidence in your writing. That's something that'll improve over time, though. Approve, improve. Yeah, maybe. Alright then, that just leaves you, Natsuki. Yeah, you're up, girly. Yeah, yeah, I'm going. Natsuki begrudgingly gets out of her seat and makes her way to the podium. This poem is called... It's called... Why are you all looking at me? Because you're presenting. Hmm. <laughs> Anyway, the poem is called Jump. Natsuki takes a breath. Once she starts reciting her poem, her sour attitude disappears a little. While she's still a little unenthused, her poem has a rhythm and rhyme to it. It's Natsuki's trademark style, and it works surprisingly well when spoken aloud. The words feel like they bounce up and down, as if giving life to the poem. Hey! Hence Jump! Natsuki finishes, and everyone applauds. She huffs back to her seat. That wasn't so bad, was it? Easy for you to say. You'd better not make me do that again. I've got news for you. Ah, well, do you at least feel prepared enough to recite a poem in front of other people? I mean, doing it in front of other people will be way easier. I can put on whatever face I want for other people, but when it's just my friends, it's just embarrassing. That's a surprise, Natsuki. I think it would be the other way around for me. Well, that's just how it is, so... Well, I guess that's the case. You won't have much to worry about for the festival. That said, I want to thank everyone for coming through. It might be hard, but I hope that you all have an idea of what it's like now. Make sure you pick up a poem and get enough practice before the festival, okay? I'll be making pamphlets, so let me know ahead of time what you'll be reciting. Jeez, I should probably find some other poem to recite instead. That's fine too. It doesn't have to be your own. I'm already pleasantly surprised that you're putting in all this effort for the club. Ah, well, I mean... It makes me really happy. Ah, yeah. No problem. Okay, everyone. I think that's about it for today. I know the festival is coming up, but let's try to write poems for tomorrow as well. It's been working out really nicely so far, so I'd like to continue that. As for the festival, we'll plan, we'll finish planning tomorrow, and then we'll have the weekend to prepare. You really did just spring this on us, didn't you? 
Monday's the big day. I can't wait. I can do this. I can do this. All right. I stand up. There's no way I'll be able to find the same enthusiasm as Sayori and Monica, but I'll do my best to get through it. If it's for the sake of the club, and impressing Monica, then I'll have to do my best. Ready to go, Sayori? Yep. Look at you two always going home together like that. It's kind of adorable, isn't it? Well, we live next to each other, chill. <laughs> Jeez, guys, don't make it such a big deal. Of. I must be a little. It must be a little nice, though. Well, uh, how am I supposed to respond to that? It's okay, Kill Switch. You don't have to say it. Whatever. Let's go already. All right, that's gonna be it for this one. Still haven't seen anything about a twist yet. Oh, better save this. Hello, mouse. There you are. Looking forward to it. Uh, maybe the twist is that I've been bamboozled. Yes. And I'm not getting anywhere with this. But, oh man, I keep trying to do too many things at the same time. Alright, that's going to be it for this one. Hopefully next time we'll see something different instead of just poetry. I don't know. Guess we'll see. But thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you next time. sitting here for a while.